What's up guys, Rob from ClicksGeek. Before we get into the content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We drop new Google Ads training videos daily. If you guys like this video content, make sure you give me a thumbs up because it's awesome and it helps our channel. So if you walk into your Google Ads account, we're gonna be looking at smart bidding options and strategies and, and everything that Google offers in, in regards to smart bidding today. All right, it's gonna be a short video. It's not gonna be too long. because I'm just gonna kind of walk you through how each one works and my personal experience with each one and just kind of give you my take on what I've seen work and what I've seen tank horribly because at this point it's a healthy mix of both. All right, so if you log into your Google Ads account, come under settings into your campaign. So log into your account, go into your campaign. We're in our HVAC uh, lead gen campaign. I think it's a demo campaign we built. Come into settings and you're going to come down. You're going to see this screen here. And you can see here we have our bid strategies. So there's a few different automated strategies here. We have target CPA, and it gives you a little blurb about what it is. So target CPA sets bids to get the most conversions possible while reaching your average cost per action goal. So essentially, if you if you choose target CPA, you're telling Google, all right, I want to get this is the HVAC guy. I want leads. I want to get leads at forty dollars. So you're telling Google, you do all the auto bidding. I just want leads. I want you to come as close to or under getting the leads for $40. Now I use this strategy, I use Target CPA pretty pretty frequently actually. It's a great strategy, but a, a small tip for you, and a lot of people don't really understand this, you have to have conversion data in the Google Ads account before you use this. So this is not for a brand new campaign. Okay? You gotta have at least 30 days of so at least 30 days running with at least 20 conversions in the account for Google to have some data to work with to start auto bidding in your campaign and get the leads at the target CPA that you set. All right, a lot of people will just think that they can just build a campaign and turn on target CPA. It never works out well. Now another thing with target CPA, make sure that once you set the bid strategy in motion, like if I chose this today, you give it time. It's, it's gonna take 14 days to get really cranked up and, and moving, okay? My experience with this, it starts out a little wacky. Like if I set this at forty dollars for the HVAC leads, I'm probably going to get leads anywhere from, honestly, anywhere from thirty to eighty, until it starts kind of winding down and working itself out. The longer you let it run, the more the algorithm has to work with, and it knows what more what to do about bidding to get you closer to your target CPA, which is forty. Now another thing, also with target CPA, don't set your target CPA too low, or you're going to choke the campaign. You'll get no traffic. Okay, I know it can be confusing. You don't know what to set it at. It really depends on your industry that you're targeting. You got to kind of just, I mean, the best, the best I, I can tell you is go into Keyword Planner. So here, let's go into Keyword Planner. So we'll come up here to the little wrench icon. I don't know if you can see that little wrench icon, tools and settings. And that's going to pull a drop down box where we'll come to Keyword Planner. We're going to type in, so this is an HVAC campaign. So type in whatever industry you're in, type in the main theme of the industry you're in to see what the keyword bids are. So let's say HVAC services, if you're a plumber, plumbing services, if you're a roofer, roofing services, etc. All right, so we're gonna kind of get an idea of click costs on the high high end of the top of the page and the low end. You can see here, these are two different columns. So we're gonna take the low end when it comes to setting our target CPA bid. So you can see here from the main keyword, theme keyword, HVAC services, about 10 bucks a click. Let's assume you've done your homework and you watch my landing page videos to get them get your landing pages converting at 25%, 20%. So let's just say uh, one out of four clicks, so 40 bucks. 40, 40 to 45 dollars is what your target CPA should be. And that's just quickly, there's not much into this. That's how I figure out a starting target CPA if I don't already know. I, I obviously I do this for a living every day, all day, in hundreds of different industries. So I already know what to set the bids at or the target CPAs at. But if you guys don't understand that aspect, this is a good way to just kind of get a quick, okay, this is how we can do this. All right. So that's how you would find it. So I would just take this and times it by four, and that's what your target CPA should be. Obviously, I'm not going to take the high end one because that would be outrageous. That'd be like, you know, 200 bucks or whatever. Start out lower. Like I said, you can always move up the target CPA if your campaign is getting choked out with slow traffic. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's my experience with it, and um, I use it all the time. I love it. Just make sure you have the data before you turn it on. Target return on ad spend, I don't use this. Actually, I've never used this. 
It sets bids to help you get the most conversion value while maintaining your target return on ad spend. All right, so it's essentially you gotta you have to have your conversions tracking set up where each conversion is assigned a uh, a value, and then it's gonna it's gonna uh, the algorithm's gonna try and get you a your return on investment based on the value. So it gives you a good example right here. For example, if your goal is to get an average of five dollars in sales for each dollar you spend on ads, your target return on ad spend would be five hundred percent. So that's how you would choose to set your percentage. This is more for e-commerce stuff, which we don't do at all, so that's why we've never used it. So uh, sorry guys, I can't really give you too much insight into this one. We we just do lead generation. Maximize clicks. I have a lot of insight into this. I use this for every campaign we build for the most part. So maximize clicks. Let's go over here and get through a little definition again. Sets bids to help you get the most clicks within your budget. So whatever your daily budget is, Google's algorithm is going to go in and it's going to go to every auction for every keyword. And that's thousands of auctions a day, hopefully, if you're getting good traffic. And it's going to auto bid and try and get you the most clicks within your budget for that day. Now, something that I tell everyone in every video I do about maximize clicks, you have to set a maximum cost per click bid limit. If you don't, Google could go crazy and bid $150 per click. I've seen it happen in crazy small industries like Limo, where they bid like $180 for Limo rental keywords, which is outrageous. So make sure you set a maximum CPC bid limit. Now you might be wondering, what the hell, how am I supposed to figure out what that bid limit should be? And what is it? Okay, so what it is first. The maximum CPC bid limit is just you're capping Google. You're telling Google, all right, 4074, you are not allowed to bid higher than this for any keyword. I don't care about the auction. You're capping them. That's what you're doing. All right. Now, how to set this cap? I set this cap based on the highest point in the um so if you go hold on, let me explain further. Go back into Keyword Planner and we have our HVAC services again. So we have our main theme keyword HVAC services. I set my highest my cap based on the top of the page high range bid. So I'll set the cap at 47.32 for my campaign. Now, obviously not every keyword is going to cost $47. There's, you can see here, every keyword's different, even on the high end and the low end. You're gonna get a healthy mix of, of both. And don't get scared that you're gonna pay $47 a click because you are, you're not gonna pay that, okay? It's gonna, it's, go, it's gonna go into every auction and every keyword, pay, you gotta pay a different price. So you're just giving it room, it's runway. The $47 is runway for the algorithm to just figure out what it can get you the most clicks with, okay? It's not gonna just overcharge you $47 a click because that fails its mission, which is to get you a lot of clicks. If, if your budget's $50 and you get one click for 47, obviously it failed, okay? So that's how I set my um, my bid limit cap for maximize clicks. I kind of just take the high end of whatever the industry specific keyword is, the price. And you don't, guys, you don't have to do the high end. I just do that because I need leads quick for the people I set up. You could you could do a healthy mix. Like if the low end's ten, and this one's forty-seven. Do twenty bucks or fifteen bucks or whatever. You can always move it up. Is my point. So if you set this at fifteen bucks. And then you come back in a few days and you only get like your trickling in impressions. There's not many of them coming in. Just move it up higher. Just keep lifting the ceiling up until you start getting the results you want to get. Okay? So maximize clicks, two thumbs up. I use this all the time. And it's great. Maximize conversions. I have a love hate with. I've seen it work really well. And I've seen it do absolutely horrible and bomb completely. All right. So maximize conversions again is another auto bid strategy where you have no control over what Google's bidding per keyword. So it can be bidding $100 per click. It can be doing whatever. This is another one too where you have to have it in the last 30 days at least 20, I think it's 25 conversions in the last 30 days for Google before you can turn this on. So Google has some data to pull from to decide which keywords are the ones that convert and go after them aggressively. So what this essentially does is it lets Google's algorithm kind of Look at your account and think, okay, so out of 500 clicks in the last 30 days, really only seven keywords sent all of this traffic. And then it's going to go after aggressively and go after those converting keywords and bid to get you more traffic from those converting keywords, which in turn will do more conversions within your budget. That's pretty much how it works. Again, I said I have a love-hate with this because I've seen it work really, really well and have it do really well on accounts currently that I'm running. And I've seen it tank horribly where I had to just turn it off. So use that with caution. But... It, I've seen it. The best time I've seen it work is for high volume conversion campaigns. 
So if you have a campaign that you're, you know, for whatever industry you're in, doesn't really matter, um, a lead gen that's getting like 30 to 40 leads a month, I, this will do well. If, you're, if you've got a campaign that's pulling in like five leads a week, I've seen it tank horribly with smaller conversion campaigns. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Maximize conversion value. I don't use this again. This is more um, not in the lead gen stuff that I, I don't set the values for conversions in, when you're setting up conversion tracking because our, our clients just don't are not interested in that stuff. But sets bids to help you get the most conversion value possible within your budget. So honestly, guys, I have no experience with that. Target impression share, I do have experience with, and we use this in a few accounts. It's more for you set where you want to be, your ads to show, whether that's the top of the page or anywhere in the results page. But a note here, top of the results page is the top one of the top four spots at the top of Google search. Absolute top of the results page is the top ad. Okay, so there's two different options. Anywhere on the results page is gonna just it's gonna throw your ad anywhere, which could be the bottom of the page. Which is why you might not want to. You might want to stay away from that. I usually just do top of results page, and then it tells you here percent impression share you want to target. 100 is obviously the ideal, but you can only start it out lower, so you're not paying it outrageous, or something like that. And you can also do a max bid limit. Um, and again, to find that, go back into Keyword Planner and just kind of do that. And you can always move that around too. But yeah, so this is just for more of those those clients or those guys who just want their ad to be at the top of other competitors. They don't care. That's what we use it for pretty much. So that's really it, guys, as far as the automated bidding strategies. Uh, manual CPC, I'm sure all of you know what that is. It's just you're doing the bid yourself. And then in hit, you can uh, have an option to increase conversions with enhanced CPC. And that kind of lets Google do a little. It's like a hybrid auto. They'll, you're letting Google bid more for keywords that it sees that are converting really well. And you might not see that. So you're, letting, you're basically giving Google some reign to increase some bids for you. And that's really it. So if you guys have any questions, drop them below in the comment section below this video. Hopefully, um, you know, you guys can have some success with some of these smart bidding strategies. Like I said, I, I use them a lot for a lot of different clients in a lot of different industries. Just um, heed my warnings <laughs> with the uh, with the uh, bid, the capping your bids, because it's a hard, hard lesson to learn. And Ed and I have learned it a few times. So we know better now. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to check out the links in the description I put some stuff in there for you guys including a three part video training series where I show you how to optimize your Google Ads campaigns how we do it and um, how to keep them running smooth alright guys catch you later